Should you always avoid pain when exercising? Is there a perfect posture? Which exercises are bad for you? In this video, I'm going to debunk the seven most common exercise and rehab myths. Myth number one, imaging shows the cause of pain. Let me tell you two facts about imaging. One, structural abnormalities found by x-rays or MRIs are actually quite common in people without symptoms. For example, a study by Horga et al. in 2020 had 115 uninjured adults undergo imaging of their knees and concluded that nearly all knees of asymptomatic adults showed abnormalities in at least one knee structure on MRI, including 30% presenting with meniscal tears. What if you do have pain? Well, a study by Barreto et al. in 2019 evaluated 123 individuals who had one-sided shoulder pain and concluded that most abnormal MRI findings were not different in frequency between symptomatic and asymptomatic shoulders. Two, surgically fixing or removing an abnormality doesn't guarantee the elimination of symptoms and often doesn't fare better than non-surgical management. For example, a systematic review by O'Connor et al. in 2022 concluded that arthroscopic surgery for degenerative meniscal tears provides little or no clinically important benefit in pain or function, and it may not improve treatment success compared with a placebo surgery. Sometimes imaging does matter because of its correlation with your symptoms and function, but there's often too much of an emphasis placed on x-rays and MRIs. If you're trying to find a connection between your imaging findings and symptoms, it's usually not hard to do so. Myth number two, you should never exercise with pain. Since imaging findings don't always correlate with your symptoms, pain doesn't always equate to tissue damage. In some cases, pain serves as a protective mechanism. It occurs prior to tissue damage. Bend your finger backward with intolerance. It hurts, but when you let go, the pain goes away and no damage occurred. Or think about the last time you turned up the hot water in the shower too quickly. It stung, but you didn't truly get hurt. A study by Hickey et al. in 2020 split athletes with acute hamstring strains into two groups. One group was asked to perform and progress all exercises while remaining completely pain-free. The other group was allowed to perform and progress exercises up to a 4 out of 10 pain. They found that both groups returned to sport within a similar time frame and had the same number of re-injuries six months later. If you consider that most tissues heal within a few months of an initial injury, including broken bones, the idea that you should never exercise with pain makes less sense as symptoms become more chronic in nature. If you've had pain for two years, it's possible that your sensitivity has increased despite healing having occurred but it doesn't necessarily mean you're damaging anything. If you have pain at rest or with any form of exercise, but you try to wait until you're completely pain-free to start exercising, you might end up doing less and less until you're not exercising at all. Myth number three, no pain, no gain. Just because pain doesn't always mean that you're causing harm, doesn't necessarily mean that you should purposely be pushing into significant pain. In certain scenarios, like immediately after fracturing your ankle, you're not gonna ignore those symptoms and hop around on that leg. Most examples aren't this extreme though. In reality, for some people who try to push through pain, they may cause a flare up that requires a period of rest to allow that spike in symptoms to subside. If they choose to continually repeat this process, they end up getting worse instead of better. They're taking two steps backward for every step forward. Rehab is usually about trying to find a balance between myths number two and three. You rarely need to completely rest and avoid all symptoms, but you also shouldn't approach rehab with a no pain, no gain mentality. Ups and downs are expected, but if your symptoms are tolerable during exercise, you're minimizing flare-ups, and you're gradually working toward your goals, you're probably moving in the right direction. The rest of the myths are usually presented as very black and white, but each one has way more than 50 shades of gray. You might not completely agree with me, which is fine, but hopefully you leave this video with the understanding that these topics are much more complex than what they're usually made out to be. Myth number four, there's a perfect posture. 
Which posture is better between these two? What about now? And now? Last one. Which postures did you choose? Why? What makes a posture good or bad? Is the bad posture the one most associated with pain? If that's the case, consider a study by Gravidal in 2007 that found no association between the sagittal alignment of the cervical spine or its individual segments and the presence of neck pain. Is the bad posture the one most likely to cause pain in the future? A study by Okada et al. in 2009 followed asymptomatic volunteers for 10 years and reported that there was no significant correlation between the sagittal alignment of the cervical spine at the time of the first MRI and the occurrence of clinical symptoms over the next 10 years. Is a snapshot of your posture even reproducible? And does it reliably predict how you actually look and move throughout the day? Research would suggest not. A study by Schmidt et al. in 2018 concluded that standing is highly individual and poorly reproducible. This is true within individuals and between individuals, whether they're experiencing pain or not. A different study by Dreyscharf et al. in 2016 concluded that the results of short-term examinations differ considerably from the average values during real life. If you're seeking help for pain, the person you're seeing shouldn't be basing their entire treatment on a snapshot of your sitting or standing posture or defining success as a change in that snapshot of your posture. You can have poor posture with no neck pain. You can also have good posture with significant neck pain. The idea that any one posture is safer or riskier than another is based on years of societal and cultural beliefs as opposed to research. Does that mean that posture never matters? Of course not. I just don't want you to permanently avoid or obsess over certain postures because you've heard that they're harmful. Let's say you have neck pain with prolonged periods of sitting. Could your symptoms be associated with the position of your neck in sitting? Sure, but they could also be related to a lack of movement and inactivity, the stress of what you're working on, and a variety of other factors. A simple solution might be to change your sitting position, stand up for a bit, or go for a walk without overly stressing about the position of your neck. And as an example, if you spend 14 hours per day looking at your phone, TV, and computer screen, changing particular aspects of your lifestyle is probably more important than worrying about your posture. Also, it's just as possible for someone to experience pain with prolonged periods of standing. Sometimes people actually feel worse trying to stand up straight or sit up tall all the time because they're trying to avoid sitting or slouching based on the belief that it's harmful. Being sensitive to certain positions or postures doesn't mean they're bad or the sole cause of pain. However, if temporarily or permanently changing how you interact with your environment makes you feel better physically or mentally, I'm all for it. Myth number five, there are proper ways to move. Based on these two videos, who do you think is more likely to tear their ACL? A study by Mortvid et al. in 2020 informs us that your guess is no better than a coin flip. Although research by Delavia et al. in 2020 helps us better understand the injury mechanisms, situational patterns, and biomechanics of ACL injuries, there is currently no screening test available to predict sports injuries. A study by Aaron Dell et al. in 2018 even showed that knee injuries can be reduced with an exercise program that doesn't actually change how someone moves. Injuries are multifactorial, and observing how someone moves in a controlled environment is just one small piece of a very large puzzle. If complex outcomes could always be predicted by simple variables, the NFL combine numbers would always be associated with the players that go on to have the most success in the league. Based on these two videos, who do you think has shoulder pain? Once again, research by Hickey et al. in 2007 tells us that your guess is no better than a coin flip. If I told you who had symptoms beforehand though, even if they didn't actually have symptoms, research by Plummer et al. in 2017 informs us that you'd be more likely to find problems with how the person moves. And there's several studies showing that people can have an improvement in symptoms and function without changing how their shoulder moves. Like posture, being sensitive to certain positions or movements 
doesn't mean they're bad or the sole cause of pain. If a certain movement or activity exacerbates your symptoms, it's certainly worth exploring if there are ways that you can modify it. When it comes to performance, there may be more optimal ways to move on average, but even then, how a body moves best is highly variable. Take Michael Johnson, for example. He is one of the fastest runners of all time, despite his unorthodox technique. It's advantageous to have more movement options available to you. The best table tennis players in the world have much more variability in how they can hit the ball successfully compared to novices. You will never even perform the same squat twice. It might look similar, but the execution will always be different. It's repetition without repetition. I'll leave you with one last thing to think about for this section. There are many different groups, gurus, and schools of thought all claiming to have found the most optimal way to move for injury prevention. How can this be? Are they all right, all wrong, or is it possible that there is simply no right or wrong way to move? Myth number six, you can become bulletproof. Since injuries are so complex, multifactorial, and unpredictable, it's impossible to completely prevent them. Even a bulletproof vest doesn't 100% guarantee the prevention of harm or death. Its purpose is to reduce your risk of injury, just like a comprehensive training program. People who claim to be bulletproof still have pain from time to time. It's a normal human experience. Bulletproof is just a marketing buzzword to drive engagement and sales. Myth number seven, there are universally bad exercises. Since there are no real best or right ways to move, then it follows that there are also no wrong ways to move. If you scroll through various social media platforms, you'll find people telling you how not to move, how not to exercise, and how not to perform a given task. This is a very simplistic way to view exercise and training and ignores the benefits of movement variability and the importance of individual factors, needs, and goals in exercise prescription and performance. Leg extensions are a good example of an exercise that people have deemed to be bad because they put too much stress on your knees. First of all, squats put just as much stress on your knees as leg extensions, if not more. Second of all, when did stress become a bad thing? Do you wanna improve your cardiorespiratory fitness? Stress your heart and lungs. Do you wanna build muscle? You have to stress your muscles. Stress isn't good or bad. It just helps elicit adaptations one way or the other based on the stimulus and recovery. How can you claim that leg extensions are bad without any consideration for sets, reps, frequency, load, range of motion, etc.? If I try to squat 500 pounds and collapse under the bar, is squatting bad? If I decide to run a marathon without any training and my knees start to hurt, is running to blame? Believe it or not, there's no research to suggest that any exercise is inherently more dangerous than another, not even upright rows. If I do one repetition of an upright row with an unweighted dowel, is it bad for my shoulders? What if I do two repetitions? What if I do two repetitions with five pounds? When does it become bad for me? It's easier to make things black and white for social media, but these kinds of discussions need to be viewed through a critical lens. And you might be thinking that research isn't needed because everyone already knows that upright rows are bad for you. But how is that information known? Well, someone stated it as fact, and we all decided it to be true. Kind of like when the Earth was known to be the center of the universe. I also know there's the argument that someone not might have issues with upright rows now, but just wait 20 years. Well, as I already mentioned, no one's bulletproof. It would actually be unusual for someone to not have at least one episode of shoulder pain over the course of 20 years. And like I said in myth number one, it's easy to find a connection between things if you're looking for one, especially if your beliefs and expectations have been influenced by what you've read or heard over the years. I've never seen someone with shoulder pain due to upright rows, but I've seen a lot of people who have pain with walking. I've never told any of them that walking is bad for them. Two final points here. One, I understand that you might have a very strong opinion about the topic based on your experience or understanding and I'm not trying to take that away from you. I'm just trying to demonstrate that these complex conversations can't be summarized with a green check mark and red X. 
Two, you don't have to do any exercise that you don't want to do. Your exercise choices don't personally affect me, and I'm not getting paid by Big Upright Row. In summary, these are seven of the most common exercise and rehab myths. Myth number one, imaging shows the cause of pain. Fact number one is structural abnormalities found by x-rays or MRIs are actually quite common in people without symptoms. Imaging does matter sometimes, but it's often overemphasized. Generally, when it comes to imaging, if you're looking for a connection, you're going to find it. Myth number two, you should never exercise with pain. Myth number three, no pain, no gain. Facts number two and three are that you rarely need to completely rest and avoid all symptoms, but you also shouldn't approach rehab with a no pain, no gain mentality. Ups and downs are expected, but if your symptoms are tolerable during exercise, you're minimizing flare-ups, and you're gradually working toward your goals, you're probably moving in the right direction. Myth number four, there's a perfect posture. Fact number four is being sensitive to certain positions or postures doesn't mean they're bad or the sole cause of pain. If changing how you sit or move makes you feel better, physically or mentally, I'm all for it. However, the idea that any one posture is safer or riskier than another is based on years of societal and cultural beliefs as opposed to research. Myth number five, there are proper ways to move. Fact number five is that similar to posture, we're unable to predict injuries or the development of symptoms based on how someone moves. The human body is a complex system and how a body moves best, therefore, is highly variable. Myth number six, you can become bulletproof. Fact number six is that pain and injuries are not completely avoidable. Like a bulletproof vest, a comprehensive training program can reduce your risk of injury, but cannot fully guarantee prevention. Myth number seven, there are universally bad exercises. Fact number seven is that there are exercises that are more or less appropriate for accomplishing a specific task, but their usefulness cannot be determined without consideration of programming parameters, your training history and goals, etc. There's also no research to suggest that any one exercise is inherently more dangerous than another. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, and leave any questions or comments down below. Peace.